everyone, welcome to my kitchen where everything is scratch made and home preserved. I'm Jenny and today I have a fun video for you. I have six dry mixes and today I'm going to be focusing on sauces and gravies to stock up in the cupboard so that I have them when I want them. So pull a chair up to the counter and let's get started. Up first, country gravy mix. Two cups of flour, and this is just regular all-purpose flour. I'm gonna put one cup of dry milk in here. This is my one cup of dry milk. And then I like to add in, if I can get it open, a quarter cup of cornstarch just to ensure the nice thickness. Something else I like to add into my country gravy that probably isn't normal is a little bit of poultry seasoning. I'm just gonna use a half a teaspoon because it just gives it that little something extra in the background. Almost sausage flavored, if you will. And then two teaspoons of onion powder. Onion powder, in my opinion, kind of mellows things out, adds a sweeter side, but it always just rounds out the flavor of things. I put it in just about everything. I think you already know that about me. I am gonna add into this two teaspoons of salt. You're probably gonna have to add more salt to your gravy when you make it. You know I don't like things too salty. Cause you, you, can, you can always add salt, but you can't take it away. So be careful with that. I'm gonna mix this in and then I'm gonna add my, um, black pepper. Black pepper is the main flavor in this. So here I've got my coffee grinder. I will tell you what, I got this thing for like, it's Mr. Coffee, $12 on Amazon, $12, $13. It's been a couple years, but they're still pretty inexpensive. This thing grinds spices so well. So I'm going to grind some black pepper up. Um, depending on how peppery you like it, I'm gonna use what's left in this thing. I got what, I don't know, a couple tablespoons. Um, so when, uh, I'm gonna grind all of it. Whatever I don't use will go into my um, pepper shaker. Okay, that can go in my recycle bin. And this is where, this is why you wanna do this yourself. If you can, you don't have to. Um, that way you can put, put it on coarse and you don't have to grind it as fine. So you can have fine, medium, and coarse. I'm gonna do mine fine. Um, just because I don't like it coarse, but a lot of people do. That is still wrong. <laughs> Okay, so that was about a tablespoon. I think that's good for me. I needed some pepper in my shaker anyway. Okay. But you can do two tablespoons of really coarse. I just store them in jars. I will put the lid on and label it. But if you look close, you can see all the freshly ground pepper. That fresh ground pepper makes such a big difference. You can use already ground pepper if you prefer coarsely ground pepper that you purchase at the store, but grinding it yourself, the taste is so amazing. To use this country gravy mix, I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of bacon grease. You can use bacon grease, you can use sausage grease, you can use butter shortening. I'm gonna take my mix here. I am gonna add three tablespoons of my mix. Since we have cornstarch in here, we're using a tablespoon more than we would if we were using just solid flour. And because there's cornstarch in there, you don't even have to do this step. You can skip it and just plop in the fat 
and the gravy mix and the water or milk, whatever you want to use. But we've got milk powder and we've got cornstarch in there. I'm just going to make sure I cook the flour out and toast it up. Again, if you mix this, all of this in with cold milk and melt your fat in later, it's perfectly fine as well. All right, that's smelling nice and toasty. I have one and a quarter cups of cold milk. You can use water. Bacon grease in this white gravy, so good. Cook till thickened, about three minutes. Look how beautiful and thick that gravy is. I will tell you, it needs salt. You can use milk or water for this. Look at that, oh yum. Over some mashed potatoes, country fried steak. Mm -hmm. Also, when I store them in my jars, I write them with Sharpie right on the glass, the directions. That way, it's there. Um, Sharpie washes off. You can just take alcohol and remove it and then wash your jars and reuse them. Um, so not a big deal to write with Sharpie, but if you stick labels, sometimes the tape adhesive can stick. So there you go. Up next is filling my chicken gravy mix jar. It's been empty a while. Two cups of all-purpose flour, one quarter cup cornstarch, tablespoons of chicken bouillon, one teaspoon of black pepper, of course this is the one I just ground up. I need two tablespoons of onion powder, one teaspoon garlic powder, one teaspoon of poultry seasoning, And then I'm going to add in one teaspoon of salt because I have bouillon in there and bouillon contains salt. Putting it into my jar. Oh, you can also put thyme. Chicken and thyme go very well together. If you have ground thyme, ground thyme works really well for this. I'm out of it. So I'm gonna put that in the recipe as well. You can put a half a teaspoon of thyme in this whole thing. And it rounds it out perfectly. To make the gravy, two tablespoons of fat. I'm using butter in this one. But if you save chicken fat, you could use chicken fat. Chicken fat is so good in this, it's what I prefer. And I do keep chicken fat in a bag in my freezer. Um, so butter, chicken fat, shortening, oil, whatever, lard, whatever you wanna use for your fat. Two tablespoons of my mix. Again, um, you may have to add salt to this when you're finished. I just like to cook my flour out, but you can just whisk this right into cold water and then turn it on and cook it until it's thickened. Okay, after cooking just for a few minutes, you're gonna put in one cup of water. I use plain old water for this, but if you wanna use a cup of chicken broth, that makes it even more chickeny. It makes the flavor even better. To any of these gravy mixes, you can also put dried onions. Cook till thickened, about three minutes. <laughs> and there you go, nice thick chicken gravy. Uh, you can see how hot it is, it's <laughs> steaming. Next beef gravy mix. I'm starting out with the same base. It's just easy for me to keep in my head. Two cups of flour, quarter cup of cornstarch, two tablespoons of onion powder, teaspoon of garlic powder, about one teaspoon of paprika, and that's about all I got left in there. 
half a cup of powdered beef bouillon. Mine is a mixture. I had a tiny bit left in here. And I ended up having to run some bouillon cubes in my grain grinder and it found, ground it into a nice dust within seconds. And that'll work perfectly in here. Half a teaspoon of black pepper. To this, I'm also going to add a tablespoon of marjoram. I am also out of parsley, or I would add parsley to this. If you can find the powdered bay, that would be great in here. Now, I didn't realize that you could get bay leaf powdered, but a subscriber told me that. So, that is wonderful. I'm going to look to get some because I love bay and in anything with beef. So that is something to think about if um, you'd like to add to this. Now, keep in mind, making gravies, all these seasonings, you can take away anything you don't like, add what you do like. It is all according to you. You don't need my permission, so you don't need to ask me if you can switch out herbs. Um, this is a dry mix. Flavor it how you want it, how you like it. Oh, here's my, here's my beef jar empty. Okay. Also, you can do, if you've dehydrated mushrooms and you've made mushroom powder, you could totally, I forgot this is a pint and a half, not a, not a quart. You can totally put mushroom powder in here. That would be great in here. I think I might just make it with what I'm going to use to, okay. Two tablespoons of butter. Again, you can use beef fat if you've got frozen beef fat, which is a great idea. I think I do have some, but since I'm just doing the video, I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna use the rest of this. I'm just gonna cook this for a few minutes, and then we'll add our water. That's been cooking for just a few minutes. I'm gonna put my one cup of water in. Again, you can use beef broth, you can use beer. And then you can put all your extras in. I love to put Worcestershire sauce in my gravy. And I also love to use kitchen bouquet. So you can add those things right to this gravy. I'm gonna cook till it's thick, about three minutes. Okay, so it is thickened up, and I'm gonna turn it off. When you make homemade gravy, keep in mind it's the beef gravy is not gonna be dark like if you do the packaged gravy. It's because they put caramel color in there. In this case, I always have Gravy Master or Kitchen Bouquet, whatever you wanna use. Just put a tiny bit in. And I like to add a dash of Worcestershire. Completely not necessary, Just this is just the way I do it. That browning sauce will brown it right up. So if you've never used Gravy Master or Kitchen Bouquet before, give it a try. Gonna give my gravy a try. Make sure there's enough salt. And there is, mm -mm, that is really good. I like the beef one better than the chicken one. But there you go, thick rich, dark gravy. Mm-hmm. All right, on to the next one. I am gonna make some Alfredo sauce. I am going to use this good old fashioned Parmesan grated cheese for this instant mix, but because I'm using this, this, this mix has to be kept in the refrigerator. Or you can use this cheese. Um, this is freeze-dried Parmesan and you can keep this in the cupboard. So if you decide to use this, if you have this, you can use this. But since many of you don't, I'm going to go ahead and use this. So I'm going to put one cup of Parmesan cheese 
in here. I just can't keep this stuff in the fridge either. One cup of Parmesan cheese, half a cup of cornstarch. The cornstarch is important, especially if you're using the grated cheese um, because it's got stuff in it that makes it so it doesn't emulsify very well. So cornstarch will help it emulsify and stay in a nice creamy sauce. I'm going to put one teaspoon of salt. The Parmesan is salty, but when you add liquid, you're gonna need extra salt. One tablespoon of garlic powder. And I am putting some of that black pepper in here. Some of them are bigger pieces, so I put my lid on. Half a teaspoon. One teaspoon onion powder. A cup of dry milk powder. If you like Italian seasoning in your Alfredo, you can add Italian seasoning. Completely up to you. Again, spice is what you want to add. I'm just going to keep mine a nice garlic Alfredo. Alfredo. You are going to mix one cup of milk or water, however you want to do it, or even heavy cream. Plus a half a cup mix. And then if you want to make it extra creamy, you can put in two tablespoons cream cheese. That is optional. One cup of whole milk. This will mix in nicely with the dry milk, but the nice thing is you can totally use water. Half a cup of mix. I'm going to mix this in before it heats up. Cream cheese is optional, but I love it and I put it in all my Alfredo. Okay, I'm just gonna heat this and stir it until it is everything is melted, incorporated, and it is into a sauce. All right, look how beautiful this sauce has thickened up. It is gorgeous. It's nice and creamy. You can skip the cream cheese and milk and add a cup of heavy cream instead if you prefer. Either way you wanna do it. You just wanna make sure this thickens up and that the cheese in there melts and that it's a smooth sauce. Okay, it needs a little bit more salt. I'm gonna put a little bit more pepper in. Perfect. Other than that, it's perfect. I think I might add a spot more salt to the mix. Probably another uh, teaspoon. One cup all-purpose flour. One cup of cornstarch. Ooh, don't make a big mess like I just did. I'm gonna put a half a cup of dried, or sorry, about a quarter cup of dried onions in here. I'm using the Thrive Dried Onions because I'm actually out of dehydrated onions, but you can just use plain old dried onions if that's what you have on hand. I've got some chives here. I am going to put in here, ooh, maybe three tablespoons chives. Okay, this is gonna seem like a lot, but I'm gonna put in four teaspoons of salt. This is going into flour, seasonings, and milk. And then we're gonna put it into potatoes. So it really, really needs the salt. I am going to put 
an entire teaspoon of black pepper. I'm going to put a tablespoon of onion powder, two teaspoons of garlic powder. I like cayenne pepper, so I'm going to put an eighth of a teaspoon. Mustard powder. This is the good old Coleman mustard powder. Two teaspoons. Okay, I'm going to whisk this together. Remembering, you're flavoring a bowl full of flour and dried milk. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and fill up my jar. And there's our sauce mix. To use this, I am going to put half a cup of sauce mix. I'm just going to dump it in my baking pan. I'm going to add two tablespoons of butter to this. Two and three quarters cups of boiling water. <clears throat> See all my little onions floating around? Make sure you get it stirred in well. And then, potatoes. Three cups of your home dried potatoes. Okay, get your potatoes tucked in there. I'm going to cover it. I'm going to put this into a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes. Then I'm going to take the foil off and cook it for another 15. Okay, the scalloped potatoes are done. Look how creamy these are. They smell so good. He's going to do a taste test for you. Okay, he's going to taste test the potatoes for you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. How are you today? I didn't eat anything yet. I'm just ready to taste right now. <laughs> he's so, <that's> so <laughs> Here we go. He's tasting the scallop potatoes. Scallop potatoes. They're probably, they might need salt. I don't know if they're salty enough. No. Oh, perfect. Are they? Okay. Oh. Mm. So that is my homemade scallop potatoes. Oh, good. Thank you. All right, last one. We're in the home stretch. If you survived this long, bless you. Two cups of dry milk. Just regular old dry milk powder. One cup of cornstarch. A half a cup of flour. I'm using half a cup only because I've got cheese powder. Here is one. and a half cups of cheese powder. This is regular old cheddar cheese powder. And we're gonna put in a quarter cup of dried onion, two tablespoons of chicken bouillon powder. It's the secret to good cheese sauce. Got some more paprika out. We need a good teaspoon of paprika. A tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of onion powder, a tablespoon of mustard powder, two teaspoons of salt. We had four in the other one. This one we have two um, tablespoons of bouillon and we have cheese. Okay, if you want to put parsley in here also, you can do that. If I had it, I'd have put it in, but I don't. I'm out. 
I need dried parsley by the gallon. Okay, I gotta fix my herb garden and grow it again. I used to grow all the herbs. Uh, we used to do aquaponics. <laughs> they haven't grown great since we quit doing aquaponics. This one probably would be better off in a half gallon. I'm gonna have to use two quarts. But believe me, you're gonna wanna wait, make this whole recipe. <laughs> this one is even better than the scallop. You can throw some extra cheese on top of this when you're baking too, if you like. This sauce is not just for potatoes. You can use it on your broccoli. You could use it as a cheesy soup base. You can use it for baked potatoes, hot dog sauce. You name it, this cheese sauce is good for everything. Squash gratin, onion gratin, cabbage gratin, mushroom gratin, you name it. This would be great over asparagus or your green beans. To make these, ooh, two tablespoons of butter, a half a cup of cheese sauce, and two and three quarters cups hot water. It smells delicious already. Again, three cups of potatoes. They don't come out with pure easy. Ein, zwei, drei. Get them submerged. Oh yeah, you see that sauce is already thickening up with the hot water, with all the cheese. All right, I'm gonna cover this up. 30 minutes covered, 15 minutes uncovered at 350. That's nice. A gratin potatoes next. These also so creamy, oh yeah. Let's just see how creamy they are. You can put extra okay. um, cheddar over the top. I'm running off over here. Here we go. She's so crazy. <laughs> if you heard our behind the scenes with me telling you, get back in your spot. X marks the spot. Don't say this. <laughs> Don't say that. She loves me. All right, here we go. Push, tester. <laughs> The My face. I knew. I yeah, knew. I knew. All, I knew. always all garoppolo. Oh, no. I like them too. Mm. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> mm. Baby, both are good. Both. So depending on if you like them scalloped or au gratin, these are both good choices for sauce mixes. Sauce mm. mixes. It's getting late in the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a starter. Thank you. It's been so. a long day for me making mixes. Yeah, she's a mix maker. <laughs> she's mix making. <laughs> all right, that's all there is to my dry sauce and gravy mixes. Super easy. These are nice to have on hand, and there are several uses for them. You can make all kinds of meals with them. Hey, folks, if you enjoyed the video, and I hope you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet and you like videos like these, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out a lot, and I sure do appreciate your support. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog for all of my recipes, including this one. I will put printable recipe cards in the description box below for your convenience. Just click and print. Also, if you try any of my recipes, please do me a favor and go back and do the star rating system. Tell me what you think about them. And as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.